Bill Smead is the founder and CEO of Smead Capital Management. He joins us each week to help demystify the stock market. Hi there, Bill. Hi. Thanks for being here. You say there are three facts that are really myths about investments. What What are you talking about here? <laughs> well, I like to call them well-known facts. Uh -huh. There are things in the marketplace or information in the marketplace that everyone knows and has acted upon and by that time you need to go the opposite direction. So is this the lemming sheep concept maybe? It, it sure mm -hmm. is. Uh, there, you, you start out with an empty hat rack and you get a full hat rack and when too many people's hats are on the hat rack they start falling off okay. and, and we're getting close to that point. Okay so the first fact that you say is really kind of a myth is that wide multiple asset class diversification is too popular. What does that really mean? Why? Well it, it, the, the fact that it's too popular tells me that the success of it is a myth. Uh, too many uh, financial advisors, too many market participants, too many pension plans and large pools of money have arranged themselves believing that that, that widely diversifying among asset classes is an end all in itself. Mm -hmm. So you might have read in the Puget Sound Business Journal the last couple of weeks uh, that uh, the pension plan of the state of Washington, the endowment of the University of Washington, after two years of committee meetings has decided to dramatically diversify away from more traditional investments, more toward wide multiple asset class diversification. And when those large institutions have done it, you pretty much got to the end of the, of the line of people who are capable of doing it. it means it's not likely to do as well as it did in the past. But we've been hearing for so long that you must diversify mm -hmm. in order to be safe. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that's not the way to go into the future? I'm saying that the reason that they like that so much is how well that strategy did the last five years. And I'm saying that the reason that that strategy did so well the last five years was how concentrated we all were in technology stocks seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So most of the money was in tech stocks at the end of 1999. So if you did anything besides tech stocks, you were diversified, you were, right? You were, you were going to okay. do better. Yeah. Second, you're a fool not to invest in the emerging markets of Brazil, Russia, India, and China, or BRIC. Why? We, we like to call that the BRIC trade. Uh, the investment markets in those countries have run so high, so fast in relation to the underlying economies that there's been a divorce between the underlying value and the prices. And whenever you see that in marketplaces, that's what we call a bubble. That's what happened to technology stocks. That's what happened to residential real estate in, in places like California, Arizona, and Florida. You just have to get away while it's booming because when they break, there's no liquidity on the way down. You have to begin to move your money out now. So I'm not saying you shouldn't be participating in those in any way, shape, or form, but most people are very much participating and they need to dramatically reduce what they're doing. So in that case, diversify, right? I, I, okay. I, yeah, away from those aggressive emerging international markets. N number three, the U.S. has seen its best days, you say, so avoid domestic large cap stocks. Why? Well, the, the, uh, I, I'm saying that that's the fact. And, and I want to do just the opposite of what it says. I don't believe that the U.S.'s best days are, are behind us. I think they're ahead of us. I think that companies that are primarily domestic businesses, uh, we've talked about companies like Nordstrom's and Starbucks, their best days are ahead of them, not behind them. And so you get a big bargain right now by investing in companies who are not perceived to be great beneficiaries of the growth in China, India, Brazil, and Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just normal companies doing normal business. Then the current financial panic that we've talked about in prior shows, the, the subprime mess, et cetera, has just given an added incentive for people to be afraid of U.S. companies because we've got trauma in our financial system. Okay, so on this note then, what are our best options? Well, uh, ironically, uh, to me, you, you want to build yourself an outstanding portfolio of quality, blue chip United States stocks right now. And uh, that's exactly what our company is building itself around. I know that you think that successful investing is a lonely business. Mm -hmm. Explain really quickly. Well, there, there were only two people at the beginning of Microsoft and they both became multi-billionaires. Investing is a lonely thing. You have to have a vision of what you see happening. You have to stick with that vision. And a lot of times there'll be naysayers and a lot of people that say, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? So when you get in a market that's really strong for two or three years and you have to get away from it because of what will happen to it when it breaks, it's very lonely on the upside. On the other side, when a market's very cheap 
and depressed, it's very lonely being an investor in it when everyone around you might be making money on something else. All right. Well, stay strong, I guess, is the ultimate message. Bill Smead, thank you so much for joining us, as always. Yeah, thank you.